Good afternoon. This is Dale Snyder with the Snyder Group at Keller Williams Realty here in Las Vegas. Today's topic of discussion is going to be covering the tax implications for clients or consumers considering doing a short sale. Now the Snyder Group specialized in short sales about four years ago and in the last couple years we've closed about 60 transactions and one of the biggest or I guess one of the biggest questions or concerns that our consumers or clients are having is, you know, how is this going to affect me with the government and the tax consequences? Uh, today, we brought Michael Johnson into the office. He's a CPA, has his own practice here in the Las Vegas Valley, has a pulse on the short sale implications, and uh, proud to have him here and thankful uh, that you're here to share this with our clients. Uh, nice to meet you. Nice to see you. All right, so uh, so Michael, uh, to get started, I guess uh, let's just let's just roll, kind of discuss a scenario. So why don't we just start with maybe a a client that has one loan on their property and it's a primary residence. So uh, what would the consequences be on somebody that it's their primary residence and we're going to go through the short sale process? Yeah, um, only one loan. Well, thank thankfully uh, there's the Mortgage Forgiveness Act, which George Bush put into place, which allows short sales and things, um, your personal residence to be forgiven for tax purposes. Okay. So, so if you own a home and you're going through that, you know, there's really, if you just have one mortgage, there's, uh, because of that act, there's really no tax consequences. You won't be taxed on that. Um, it's important it's reported correctly on your tax return, though, because you will receive a 1099 for the cancellation of debt, more than likely. Yes, and that's a very good point, and that's something that uh, you as a consumer needs to understand. You will get a 1099. It's not a question of will you or won't you. You will get it. So it's it's how that you you file that with your tax professional that's gonna, you know, either have tax exposure or not. Correct. Yeah, correct. If it's incorrectly reported, you know, you're gonna get a notice from the IRS, and they're gonna want to know why it wasn't reported because all they know is that it's income, the 1099. So. They don't know that you know it falls under this act unless it's reported correctly. Yeah, yeah, very good point. And then also consumers, you know, the this tax abatement law it went into effect in 2007, and it's set to expire at the end of the year. Correct. You know, we, we think that the bank is, I mean, not the bank, the government's probably going to extend that. Yeah. Would you? Agree? Yeah, I would agree. I mean, yeah, it, we don't know though. It all depends. I mean, with an election coming up this year, we really don't know. But yeah, I would hope so. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so playing it out worst case scenario, they don't extend it. You know, the short sale process can easily take, you know, six months to a year if you keep losing the buyer. So, you know, I would definitely weigh that into your decision making. If you're going to do the short sale or even let it go to foreclosure, you know, just to be on the safe side, you're going to want that to happen in 2012. So you don't have the tax implications, I definitely, correct? I definitely agree. And with Congress nowadays, you you don't want to, you'd never know what they're going to do. So yeah. I definitely would try to get that done. <laughs> Awesome. This year. Okay, well, let, let's move on. We don't want this video to get too long and uh, bore you folks. So let's let's move on to a more complicated scenario. And we're dealing with just primaries here, not investment properties. That'll be another video we cover shortly. So let's say they've got a, a first mortgage and they did a second mortgage, but they didn't do any refi. That was just a you know, mortgage that they took as a second position. What's yeah. the tax differences between a one loan primary? It's basically going to be the same. Um, since it's on the primary residence, it's going to be, it's going to fall under that same act. And, you know, there's no, there's no tax consequence of that. Okay. So, mm -hmm. so if it's, as long as the, it's a primary residence and the first and second loan, there, there, there will be no tax implications. Correct. Or you know, if they're secured by the home, which they are, right? I mean, uh, yeah, in this uh, scenario. In this scenario. Yeah. Okay. So, so now let's move on to like a HELOC. A HELOC would just be like a home equity line of credit or money that you've pulled out uh, in a refinance situation and utilized. Yeah. So let's say that they used all the money on the refi or HELOC to do improvements on the home. Okay. Is there any tax consequence? No. Again, they're safe. Um, okay. The problem's going to arise when you pull the money out to buy a car, go to Hawaii, and do, do things that weren't on your personal residence. That's where there is a possible tax implication. Okay. There, there are other ways besides the act to get out of the tax, such as um, bankrupt, bankruptcy or insolvency, if you can prove that. Um, but generally, it's going to be taxable if you 
if you went and bought a new car or something like that. Okay, okay. This is why I'm glad to have a professional here today because I have this conversation all the time with my clients, and this is where it gets tricky. You know, I can advise them on the basics, uh -huh. but based on what you just told me, you kind of lost me a little bit. I, like, I kind of understand insolvency uh -huh. and all of that, but you know, I think the most important thing as a consumer is to reach out to a professional that specializes in each aspect of this. So when it comes to you know your tax implications, and if you did do a HELOC or pulled money out, you, know, you definitely want to contact Michael. He'll give you a free consultation to go over your specific scenario because it's going to vary, right? Yeah, it's definitely. I mean, there's so many scenarios that you know. It's good to talk to me. Give me a call. I'm happy to help you and. Um, whatever questions you have before or after the transaction, uh, I'm here for you, so. Okay, awesome. So what we're gonna do is at the end of the video, Michael's information will come up onto the screen, but you can also find him on our website under the Preferred Vendors uh, tab, which we will show the link to that page. So I hope this was valuable information, and I'd like to thank you for coming by today, Thanks, Michael. All right. All right, so it's Dale Snyder with the Snyder Group from Keller Williams Realty talking about the tax implications in doing a short sale in the Las Vegas market. Have a fantastic day.